Hello, hello Libra. Welcome to your mid-year review reading. This is good for you if you're a sun, moon, or rising Libra. And if you remember last December, I did an annual reading. But as we all know, things change, things do shift, energies shift. And so I'm coming back and doing this as a review so that we can see if anything has changed and also to give you the insight that you need to make the most of this time. So go ahead, if there's a specific answer that you're looking for, if there's something that you would really like to focus on or to receive from this reading, go ahead and set your intention as I pull these cards. Okay. First thing coming through for Libra, let go of the promises that you've outgrown. I like that one. So this is just about refocusing what your attention is on and what you may have committed to in the past that no longer makes sense for you. In what ways, um, you know, and you might be holding on to something that is completely out of alignment with you, but you might be doing it out of obligation or some other reason that is um, that could actually be holding you back from a lot more. The animal card for you is octopus. So this is really going to be a time where you can innovate exactly how you have been navigating situations. Think about how adaptable and creative the octopus is. Very, very, very gifted at navigating situations. And so that is your model for the next six months. Or it can be, it can be your model at least. And then the word for you is restriction. One of my favorite cards in this deck Limitations may actually be creative opportunities. Choose helpful constraints to make the big idea real. Don't be fooled by others' limiting beliefs, okay? Remembering that even if you're experiencing some form of restriction, oftentimes it is happening for you and it's very easy to get wrapped up in just focusing on what we want. We can kind of lose sight in the way that restriction can actually help us. Okay, so the central energy for Libra is the Two of Swords, not knowing. We can't know everything. We can't know, no matter how psychic you are, <laughs> we can't know the answer to everything all the time and see exactly what happens next. And it's something that the more you can just allow yourself to feel at peace with this reality, the easier time you're going to have. So just remind yourself, you don't have all the answers, but that's okay. You're just doing the best that you can in present time. And this, this is, we're going to build off of this. So don't worry, it's going to come up again. When it comes to your friends, family, and community, we have the Ace of Wands. I think that this is going to be one of those areas that's really important for Libras, focusing on the people that you feel most connected to, as we all know, Libras are very much uh, relational creatures. And so who are the who is supplying the relationships in your life that matters? Is it friends? Is it family? You know, do you have a group of people that you feel really connected to or that you want to be connected to? It might be the right time to pursue more connection with people that you feel really inspired to connect with and feel called to initiate friendships with or relationships with. In your material resources, and this is, this is anything from money to time to people, whatever resources you need, we have the Two of Cups. So I think that the money or whatever other resources you need are in large part going to come through relationships. No surprise there. And 
for you, it's about making the connection initially that's going to make a big difference. So put yourself out there. Be extroverted if you if you can find a fleck of that. We all we all have, you know, we sit somewhere on the extroversion spectrum. Uh, but the more you can socialize and put yourself out there and, and make yourself seen, heard and known, the easier your um, your manifestations and resources are going to come through. Now, these top three cards are pieces of advice for you. So advice number one, we have the Four of Cups. It's okay to say no to things that you don't want to do. Uh, Libras have a terrible tendency to people please. I, I don't know a Libra, particularly Libra Sun and Moon, who hasn't had a challenge with that in some way, shape, or form. It might be you know, the need to be in balance. It might be the, you know, the feelings of being really, really motivated to um, do for others and be of service. But whatever it is for you, this is going to be the time to remind yourself that you don't have to say yes all the time. You don't have to overextend yourself. You don't have to overcommit. You don't have to do any of that. You can actually turn down offers if they don't feel right. So allow yourself to do that. Give yourself permission to not do everything for everyone and say yes all the time. All right, second piece of advice, the five of cups, yeesh. Okay, <laughs> so I'm gonna clarify this one because it's, it's interesting that it's coming up as an advice card, particularly from this deck. So let me see. Okay, so we have the Page of Swords. I think that the old, the old ways that you were doing things just isn't effective anymore. And so that might be what's causing the disappointment or the frustration. So you, if you are feeling uncomfortable, discontent, um, frustrated, if you're feeling blocked or stunted in any way, then you want to focus on what behaviors are the common denominator and how can you branch away from that and make positive changes so that you can actually get the things that you want. This is about a pattern that you have. I want to make that really clear. This is not circumstantial. Nope, nope, nope. This has nothing to do with circumstances. It has nothing to do with an extra bill. It has nothing to do with a person breaking up with you. It has none of those things. This is purely your pattern, and that is what's causing some of this distress. You want to make sure that, and there's a large part of, um, if you're overextending yourself, if you are doing too much, if you, again, if you're saying yes to everything, that might not be working. You want to let yourself just acknowledge that it's not effective anymore and make a change so that you can move on and have more of the things that you want. Advice number three, Queen of Wands. This is also, um, well, part of this is within you, uh, right? So you being more of your fiery self, but there's also a large piece of this that to me, this looks like a person who's a fiery friend of yours, who has a lot of energy, who um, gives you, who, like, who makes you question yourself? Uh, not in a bad way, but just, uh, like, makes you have those thought-provoking questions. Those are the types of people that are going to challenge you, that are going to take you to the next level, that are going to support you at this time. Because, if you're just hanging out with people who affirm a current belief system, it may not be right because if you've outgrown it, then it's not actually helping you. I always encourage whenever I see something like this, especially with the Five of Cups here, the need for you to do something differently is being amplified by the Queen of Wands because this person, this character, 
somebody who's going to make you question the way you've done things and the way you're doing things now in a loving way, right? We don't want any abusers. That's not the idea. This is just somebody who can really light that up for you and amplify uh, your patterns so that you can adjust them. Um, so hang out with your fiery friends, the people who challenge you, but also make you feel empowered, right? If, if they're doing it in a disempowering way, then that could actually backfire. So if you feel really good around this person, then it's, I, I would say, keep hanging out with them. Or somebody who, um, like asks you about your motives, like who asks you, is that, like, what is your end game here? What are you actually looking to get out of this situation? Those are the types of questions that you want to be asked. Now, I do split up in this reading in particular. I have split up the outcomes. So this is for you if you're taking all of this advice, if you're making necessary changes, if you're hanging out with your fiery friends and you're doing all the work. This is for you if you do nothing. If you make no changes, nothing... Uh, nothing is adjusted or anything like that. Then we have the King of Swords. So it looks like you do get, um, I think this is feelings of isolation. The, the King of Swords is about, you know, independence. And even though this is an air card, you're more interested in relationships, connection, being with the people that you care about, and so the, the King of Swords is a little bit more on the side of staying solo, not needing anybody, not having those connections. And so because of that, um, particularly in this deck, because there, um, there is a reference to being out in the woods on your own. And so that's why isolation is coming up so big. Um, you can do this if you want. It just doesn't look like you're, if you're interested in healing relationally or getting into a relationship, then this is the opposite of what you want. Or maybe this, you know, maybe you're not interested in um, making any connections or calling in those manifestations or anything like that, which is fine too. So if you are doing the work, then we have the world. I think that this is where things become really clear for you. And this is also a good time to see. Hold on, I'm listening. Sorry. Oh, it's this healing right here. The old ways of being and the old ways of doing are being wrapped up, they're being acknowledged and sent on their way, and that is healing that pattern and that cycle for you. The world is about resolution, and you're able to get that. It's just that you need to do the work in order to get this, in order for everything to be cleaned up, for all the loose ends to be tied up. Okay, now I'm going to go into the timeline if you guys remember, I used to split up my timelines and I'm doing the same thing here. This is for circumstances. This is for romantic relationships, regardless of whether or not you're single or in partnership. Um, first, second, third, and fourth quarter, if you're new to my channel. So that's where you'll end up at the end of the year. And each of these lasts about a month and a half. So this is in the thick of eclipse season where I'm starting the reading right here. So the circumstances for Libra in the first quarter, Eight of Cups, a change in perspective. I think that with the eclipse season, you're really beginning to see how things aren't working. You know, it's essentially you're doing some troubleshooting in the beginning, um, or not in the beginning of the year, but in the first quarter, July, August-ish. This is the point in time when you realize you need to take a new approach. You don't have to, but you're going to see it loud and clear. The ways that you were doing things aren't really effective anymore. And in relationships, we have the sun, vitality, vibrance. I think that, you know, there there is a great deal of opportunity here. If you're not in partnership, there is... Um, 
an abundance here if you're looking for partnership because I'm, I'm looking at this part right here with the basket of fruit. It's showing abundance, plenty, enoughness. I would say, and then if you're in a relationship, it just looks like there's an extension of those warm fuzzies and the feel-good feelings. Okay, second quarter, we have the Two of Cups. This is a, um, a reiteration of this card, a reappearance of that card. So this is the time of connection. This is going to be... Let's see, this is August through September, so mid-August to September. And um, I, this isn't just for love. I want to make that clear. Um, it doesn't have to be, especially if you're not interested in that at all. It, it can be a professional connection. It can be a business connection. If you are interested in romantic partnership, then this is a great omen to see because it's showing that that is accessible to you. It's something that could easily show up for you and start to blossom at this time. This might just be the connection and then this is actually evolving into something else. And then in your romantic life, we have the Ten of Wands. Watch out for overexerting yourself. Remember, you know, you're working with that energy of overextension, doing too much, wanting to keep the peace uh, can quickly bleed into people pleasing. So remember that even if you do have relationship stuff going on, if you are dating somebody, you can set boundaries, you can slow it down, you can do all of that stuff because when you're entering a relationship like that, you don't want, want it to burn out quickly, you actually want it to be sustainable. So make sure you're still taking care of yourself and setting boundaries. That's really important. Now, third quarter, Knight of Swords. So really make sure that you're holding on to your independence somewhat in terms of, um, or sorry, not independence, independent thinking is what's coming up for this card. So whatever circumstances and situations are surrounding you, it's okay to take an innovative approach to this. Kind of like that Aquarian energy of, I'm going to think about this differently. I'm going to find a creative solution. That's what the octopus is for. Being adaptable and being okay, not doing things the way other people want you to. And in romantic life, we have the world. So this is where things really become clear. It could be what you want. It could be a circumstance that um, kind of gets wrapped up in a, a relationship, in a romantic setting. This could also be where um, something is defined. It, 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 it's just about that uh, solidification and resolution that you get from a relationship. And fourth quarter, we have the emperor, divine masculinity, focusing on how do you pursue? That's the question that you want to ask when the emperor comes up. Uh, you we want, want to ask yourself when you see this card is um, how is that archetype being lit up within yourself? How are you... Um, it's kind of like, how are you chasing after what you want? Because you have divine masculinity and divine femininity within yourself. It's just about how are you pursuing? And if you feel like that's kind of been on hold or that's something that hasn't really um, been at the top of your priority list, and then it's time to just explore uh, how you can adjust that. And in romantic life, we have the Four of Wands. This is about building, okay? So, at, you know, building a home together, building a connection together, or if you're single, if you aren't interested in partnership, then this is something where you want to take the focus back to your home, building for yourself, holding that space within your own home and feeling content and at peace in that way. Okay, 
And then we're gonna do a three card pick. You're welcome to pick a card. You can ask a question. Alrighty, card number one, The Fool. Again, it's all about doing things differently. Change it up, mix it up. If you've done it before, try something else. Try something different, see what happens. It's not, it's not going to hurt to innovate for the rest of the year. And just catch yourself if you find yourself responding the same way or falling into the same pattern or, you know, just living life on repeat. See what you can mix up. Card number two, we have the star. Things are working out behind the scenes. You just can't see it yet. I know that's kind of frustrating for a lot of people. It's not ironic that this is sitting on top of the Two of Swords. It's about, I don't know, but I'm still going to trust. That is absolutely something that... Um, it, it's something that takes practice, and so if you're not used to that, just remember that it, it can take some time to do this, but that's going to be the biggest tool that you have. Card number three, we have the Four of Cups. It's okay to say no. Don't forget that. It's okay to say no. It's okay to put things on hold. It's okay to not accept something right away or not commit to something right away. This is okay. It's okay to go slow and not um, overextend yourself for the sake of somebody else. All right, so that's all I have for the reading. Don't forget to check out my other YouTube channel. I will post the, um, the channel and a video from there in the boxes on the screen. And um, don't forget, if you want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, all of the links are in the description box. And until next time, Libra, I hope you have a beautiful rest of the year. Happy eclipse season, and I will talk to you all later. Bye-bye.